Hello dear students, a very warm good morning to all of you and welcome back in our biology session. So in biology session we are discussing about our lesson that is nutrition in plants. And up till now we have discussed so many other points regarding this lesson. So today we are going to move for the next point from the same lesson. Okay. Before that when we move that point I just recall that in the previous video we have discussed about the raw material of the photosynthesis and how exactly the photosynthesis process takes place in the plant. And as we have know that who is the kitchen of the plant or who is the food factory of the plant? Yes, correct. More uh, plant uh, in the plants leaf perform the food synthesis process or the food is the kitchen of the plant or food factory of the plant. But my dear students, have you know that in the plants leaves are making the food okay or leaves are doing the process of photosynthesis but along with the leaves there are the certain other parts of the plant which are green in color they also perform the photosynthesis process for example we can say that cactus okay so the cactus is having green color stem and that is the reason the stem can make the food or the stem performs the photosynthesis process okay and in a desert plant the leaves are modified into the spines okay the leaves are modified into the spines like this structure why to reduce or to avoid the loss of water during the process of transpiration what is meant by the transpiration process as the as we know that the excess of water is thrown out by the plant in the form of water vapor and that process is called as what transpiration okay but in a desert plant they cannot uh, tolerate the loss of the water why because it, already they are having the lack of the water okay so to avoid the loss of the water they their leaves are modified into the spines and the stems makes the food because the stem is green in the color also in some plants branches are green so the branches also helps to perform the photosynthesis process okay so this is all about what the green plants or the green leaves okay but see in the image there are the certain leaves which are not green in the color okay they are different in the color some are red yellow okay some are having the white spots over it so it means they are not performing the photosynthesis process they doesn't carry the chlorophyll no it is not like that they also contain the chlorophyll okay they also contain the chlorophyll and they can also perform the photosynthesis process but the thing is that what the chlorophyll is get hide under the colorful pigment okay because they are having the red color pigment more and because of that red color pigment the chlorophyll get hide and that is the reason we can see that leaves different in color or the red in the color but still this colorful leaves also contain the chlorophyll and they also perform the photosynthesis process okay so now uh, summer season is going on after some days or after few days we will face we will face or we will feel the rainy season during the rainy season we can see in the ponds or in the small small ponds we can see the stagnant water or the water is get collected to small surface okay so see on that water surface we can see with the layer of green color okay the layer of the green color and that layer is nothing but what algae okay that layer is for nothing but what algae so why is algae is a green in the color because they also contain the chlorophyll see here yeah, exactly how is the algae okay so this layer you can see on the stagnant water that green color layer it is called as what algae okay and this algae is a green in color because they contain the chlorophyll and they can make their own food with the help of the photosynthesis process okay so this is about the non green color leaves and about the algae now we are going to move for the next point from the lesson that is about the cell so we have discussed in our previous video about the stomata stomata is having the gut cell okay so in this way what is mean by cell okay as we know that when the construction is going on to give the proper structure to the building the builders or the contractors use the bricks okay and with the help of the bricks they are giving the proper shape to the building like this our body is having proper structure proper shape because of the tiny units which 
which are present in the body and the tiny units are called as what cell okay that tiny units are called as cell so we can say that it is the basic structural and functional unit of living organism or the tiny units which are present in the living organism is called as what cell each and every living organism is made up of cell only the thing is that some are having only one cell in their body and some are having the so many cells in their body okay so this is about what cell cell means what the tiny units of living organism their whole body is made up of cell and because of the cell they are having proper structure and proper function is going on in their body so let's see the different parts of the cell or different components of the cell first one we are going to see that about the cell membrane okay so this cell is having thin outer boundary okay the cell is having thin outer boundary which is called as what cell membrane one outer layer is there around each cell and that cell outer layer or that outer thin boundary is called as what cell membrane next one in the cell we can see the centrally located spherical structure okay centrally located spherical structure and that structure is called as what nucleus that structure is called as what nucleus all the cell work is get controlled by this nucleus okay next one also around this nucleus okay around this nucleus we can see the jelly like substance you know jelly not so much uh, solid also not liquid also like a sticky substance we can say or the jelly like substance we can say and the jelly like substance which is present around the nucleus or nucleus is surrounded by the jelly like substance which is called as what cytoplasm okay so in each and every cell these all the three components are present which are that that are nucleus cytoplasm and cell membrane what is my cell membrane thin outer boundary nucleus centrally located spherical structure and cytoplasm is what the nucleus is surrounded by the jelly like substance which is called as what cytoplasm okay, so these are the basic three components of the cell so this diagram you have to draw in your biology notebook okay so this is about cell now we we'll move for the next one point from this same lesson that is synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates okay so we have seen in our previous video that plants can make their own food in the presence of photosynthesis or in the presence of sunlight and they make their food in the form of carbohydrate or we can say that glucose okay but how do you know my dear students this carbohydrate is made up of three different substances or three different different elements okay that are so what is the formula for carbohydrate that is c h o okay c means what carbon c means what carbon h means hydrogen and o means oxygen okay so the carbohydrate is made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen along with these three elements the carbon the yeah, carbohydrate is made okay next one so the plants can make the carbohydrate but along with that carbohydrate plants are making the plants prepare the proteins and fats plants can make the proteins also and fats also okay so this protein is a nitrogenous substance they contain to prepare the protein they requires the nitrogen so from where the plants get the nitrogen as we know that in the air okay in the in atmosphere there is a 78% of nitrogen okay for the nitrogen gas nitrogen gas is present in the air in abundant in a very high amount but that nitrogen which is present in the air is not get utilized by the plant the plant cannot utilize the nitrogen which is present in air then how they are getting the nitrogen so there are the certain bacteria okay there are the certain bacteria and the name of that bacteria is what rhizobium bacteria okay so this rhizobium bacteria absorbs the atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into the soluble form okay convert it into the soluble form 
and then mix it into the soil okay and in the soil when it get in mixing the soil along with the water the plant absorbs that nitrogen in this way plants can get the nitrogen and then nitrogen is used to prepare the proteins okay one more thing is that some farmers are applying or some farmers uh, spread the or gives the fertilizers to their crops okay why because that fertilizers are also rich in the nitrogen and with the help of that fertilizers also the plants can get the nitrogen to synthesize the proteins okay so in this way plants can make the proteins also and the fats also okay so which are the three main part or which are the three food components are made by the plants that are carbohydrates proteins and fats plants can make or plants can prepare food items or the food components like carbohydrate proteins and fats okay so in this way these three nutrients are made by or they require to form for their proper growth in this way other than the carbohydrate plants also makes the proteins and fats for protein synthesis they require the nitrogen and rhizobium bacteria helps to dissolve the or helps to convert the soil nitrogen into the soluble form that soluble form get mixed into the soil from the soil the plants absorb that nitrogen and synthesize protein okay also from the fertilizers they can get the proteins okay in this way plants can synthesize the components other than the carbohydrate that are proteins and fats okay so my dear student what we have discussed today we have discussed about the cell also we have discussed about the synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrate that are proteins and fats and also we have discussed about how the non green leaves makes the food okay so this is all about today today we will stop here we'll meet in the next video with the next point and for today thank you